Then there is the fifth issue of business. Business. On this one, the opinion was divided, with about 50% of my sample claiming that business is not for everyone. Any loan that you go for, the repayment period should be anywhere between one to five years, not anything more than that. And please, 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 don't exhaust your ability up to a third for the first loan. Hi everyone, I got employed by the Teacher Service Commission TSC on the 8th of March the year 2012. And this year, this January 2023, about 30,000 teachers are reporting to different schools having been employed by the same commission, although most of them not under permanent and pensionable terms. I therefore asked myself, what different thing would I do if I was to go back in 2012 as a fresh employee, especially in terms of finances and self-development because these are things that are not taught in schools, finances. And we find ourselves with money all of a sudden and we don't know how to manage these kind of finances and we end up committing some big, big mistakes. And some of these mistakes haunt us many years down the line and some of them actually up to our retirement age. To help me answer this question, I called 12 teachers cut across different job groups, different ages, different counties, different communities, the two genders of course, some administrators and some classroom teachers for an in-depth reflection with some calls taking as long as one hour, nine minutes. This video is therefore a cocktail of genuine advices from the heart of teachers distilled and refined specifically for any new employee but a little bit inclined on the teacher's side. The reason for making this video is because I am genuinely concerned about the welfare of new employees and would really like them to avoid the mistakes that most people do when they get employed. And at this particular point, I would like to say congratulations to the Teacher Service Commission because nowadays I have seen them come out and orient the new employees because some of these employees can commit very huge blunders, very big mistakes that can put them in very bad books with the employer and sometimes even with the law of the country. So congratulations, that's a very positive thing to our employer. I have therefore broken down the video into these parts, circle shares, insurance policies, buying of land, loans, businesses, construction of a house, pursuing a degree or a master's, purchasing a car, and finally just do it. This final part is very, very crucial, and I would advise you to watch the whole video until the end, although it is a little bit longer than my usual videos. Before we embark on the video, I would like to say that one of the biggest influences in your life that's going to happen is the environment. And if you get into a staff room where everybody has got a personal vehicle, most likely you're going to buy a personal vehicle. If you get in a staff room where everybody's buying some plots, most likely you're going to buy the plots. If you get in a staff room where six, seven teachers are enrolled for a master's or degree, you are most likely going to go that direction. So the environment really plays a very big role. But this kind of a video can set you aside and make you do things the right way so that you don't end up perhaps buying a vehicle just because of the environmental influence, even when you don't really need it. Because believe you me, there's a time when you shall really, really need a vehicle. Let us start with the issue of circle shares because there was a near unanimous agreement that it is the first thing that one should do, any new employee, immediately one gets employment. I'm saying near unanimous because one teacher opted for land or preferred land before the shares. Long before you get your pay slip, take those circle forms and commit as much as possible. Anything between 10,000 to 20,000 for the permanent and pensionable employees and 3,000 to 10,000 for the interns are the recommended figures since, as the majority put it, during the first few years, there is very little commitment for most employees in terms of family and children. And you have only yourself to feed and take care of in most of the cases. One of the things that will help you in this is refusing the urge to upgrade to a one or two bedroom house while the bed sitter or the single room you are in currently is still okay and can still suffice. Living too far from your workplace, whereas a nearby center or market also has good houses. 
The second issue is the issue of insurance policies. And on this one, there was a unanimous agreement that insurance policies are a no-no. Mr. Michel called them robbers without violence because after investing for 15 years, they gave him back his money, which was less by 700 shillings. Mr. Maura called them takataka. And Mr. Gish, a deputy principal in Kitale, had really, really to follow them up before they could process his payment. Mr. Micheni was concerned that unlike the circles, you don't know where to find them because some of them have only offices in Nairobi. But most importantly, they never tell you the whole truth. Another lady, a former colleague of mine, currently servicing a 15-year plan, did not have any positive words for the insurers, while Mr. Molobesi called them as calm. And just like Mrife, no matter how much they try to convince you, Run, Murife, run, in his own words. Don't run, don't, don't run! run. Murife, Murife, don't run! Hey, Murife, don't run! But just before shooting this video, I decided to talk to an insurance consultant by the name of Kagorun Jaroge to get to understand why teachers have got such negative sentiments towards the insurance policies. Because I felt that it would be unfair for me to come out here and bash the whole industry the whole insurance industry and tell all the teachers not to take the insurance policies. Honestly, there must be a few teachers perhaps or a few individuals who have got some positive stories. And according to him, it is because the negative stories or the negative experiences really sell. And the people who have got the positive stories don't expose themselves so much, don't talk about them. So it is the negatives that we hear. The reason why all these things happen According to him, is because these companies send some interns to come and sell their policies. Some of them young graduates. And for them, the most important thing is to sell the policies. They want to close the sale. So he said that they may not necessarily lie, but they may misrepresent the facts. And because of that, I decided to consult a little bit further because I'm a scientist. And I understand that a sample of 12 teachers may not be representative enough. I went out to look for any positive experience. And I'm going to be including it in this video just before releasing it. But one more thing that he told me that if you have got any problem with your insurance policy, please consult the insurance regulatory authority. Those guys are going to sort you out. Indeed, I was given a few contacts to call just in a bid to collect some positive reviews about the insurances. And the individuals I called surely gave me some positive reviews that they were paid. And if I was tempted not to believe them, I called my own father-in-law, who is now a retired teacher. And he confirmed to me that, yes, indeed, he was paid in accordance with the contract that they had signed. So on this issue of insurance, kindly do your own research. The second issue of land or real estate ranked up there, coming second only after the circle shares. The advice that was given is that since land is more of a long-term asset with no immediate returns, go for cheap plots. This one I totally agree with them and I must admit that I came to know about it so late because of the lack of advice. The issue of cheap plots as advised by Mr. Gish and Zach is tied closely to the fourth issue of loans. It would be very, very advisable to start early as Mr. Maura advised and not commit what Mr. Mulobesi from Bungoma listed as his biggest mistake, waiting to accumulate shares so as to take a loan because the value of land keeps rising and does not wait for anyone. A plot that is selling at 400,000 this year shall be about 600,000 next year. This means that you can go for a bank loan, but listen to me and listen to me good. Any loan that you go for, the repayment period should be anywhere between one to five years, not anything more than that. And please, please, please don't exhaust your ability up to a third for the first loan. This advice was given to me by Mr. Michel, but I ignored it later on in my life, and it has really, really cost me. Any loan appearing on your pay slip is extremely tiring in a chokesha sun. So if you take a loan of six, seven, eight, nine, and nowadays there are some circles offering up to 10 years, you will have completely tied yourself into a cycle of loans, top-ups and buy-offs, which you can rarely get out of. 
As I conclude on the issue of land, I would also advise that you go for big chunks of land, such as one acre or two acres, in the interior parts, and plant trees, as advised by Mr. Gish and Mr. Molobesi, as you wait for the value to rise. It will definitely rise. And in a few years, believe it or not, you will be the one cutting those plots and selling them at very high profit margins. As they say, you can never go wrong with the land. Just conduct your due diligence and have some very reliable people to walk you through so that you don't end up buying air, since that can sink you into depression as you see the negative on the pay slip and nothing to show for it. Then there is the fifth issue of business. Business. On this one, the opinion was divided, with about 50% of my sample claiming that business is not for everyone. For those who favored businesses, this is what they advised. Start small. Don't be overambitious and go get some big loans to finance your business, committing the mistake that I have warned you against under loans. Amazingly, Mr. Zak in Naivasha and Mr. Mishani from Chuka Higambakau both quoted the same amount of money, 200,000 to 300,000, to start a business. Then if it does well, you can always boost it. The reason for this, Mr. Zak would add, is that you don't actually know what will accept you and therefore you should not go testing the depth of a river with both feet. The biggest problem with business, as a lady current colleague of mine observed, and this one I agree with her 110%, is workers. I repeat, workers. Unless it is your husband or wife running the business for you. Wafanyikazi watakuibia, sabotage you, frustrate you, and you will eventually close that business and start nursing depression, high blood pressure, ulcers, diabetes, if you're not careful. On this one, I have first-hand experience with my m businesses. I had four of them at my peak, some of which I had christened as CBK because I also had all the bank agents within. I have none today as I shoot this video. How I wish I had enough time to narrate all my experiences. Yani unandi come to boutique. And instead of selling your stock, she has her own clothes that she is selling. You have a bar and someone has his own crates that he is selling instead of yours. Matatus, matatus, don't even go there. Because your driver will end up buying his own matatu as he returns your scrap a few years down the line. Now that I don't have enough time in this video, it is this article that explains properly what I'm talking about concerning businesses. His conclusion is so good that I don't have to add anything. One more thing about businesses, as Mr. Siso would advise, start a business that you know how to run in case your worker does not show up or the machines break down. If it's a car wash, make sure you know how to operate that machine. If it is a kinyozi, you must be a baba yourself. And if it is a gym, you must also be a gym instructor or learn and become one. My father runs a butcher in Nakuru, and so far he has had over five workers in a period of one year. He tells me that if he didn't know how to sell meat, he would have closed down the business a long time ago. The sixth issue of a house also ranked up there, coming third after land and second to those who already have inherited land. Something that one of my interviewees swore to give his children once they become of age, since it can really, really jumpstart an individual, making him or her skip several steps, especially that one of acquiring land using some loans. The advice here was that you should not stay in a rental house for too long, the definition of too long in this case being above 10 years. The ideal thing here is to start with rentals, but if it is impossible, start with a simple, humble structure. Mr. Micheu, Mr. Maura, and the lady colleague of mine advised against constructing dead assets, especially in our rural areas, echoing the words of keeping a teach, the former KWS director. Whether it is where you are currently working or your rural area, go for a small house at first, instead of a mansion, unless you really have the ability to do so. The small house that you construct at first, you shall rent it out the moment you move into your mansion in the near future. Then there is a seventh issue of a degree or a master's. Now, for those starting off as certificate or diploma teachers, it would be really, really advisable 
to go for a degree because degree huisha but for masters about 90% of the individuals who start off uh, doing their masters end up not completing them i am a victim of the same and i have narrated my predicaments in this video the advice on masters as put by one of my colleagues who did not wish to be mentioned is that we should avoid accumulating dead papers as mr maura put it we should be very clear right from the word go on why we really want to pursue the masters in most cases most of us want to run away from the mega tsc pay but as one teacher who is currently pursuing his phd observed about 99% of the workers end up in the same line of profession that they start with rarely can you jump from teaching to the corporate world for example we should also go all the way to a phd if we really want to go the academia way but most importantly have enough cash for both the classwork and the thesis or project as mr mlobesi put it the eighth issue in this video is the issue of a car and it ranked very very low actually the last one in order of priority unless it is a business vehicle or it is helping you earn some money in a particular area for instance you have gotten some part time job as a lecturer after your masters and now you have to be rushing between the two workplaces you need a car in that case when you finally decide to go for one go for one that you can manage and not a fuel guzzler on whether to go for a new or a second hand vehicle honestly i forgot to remember to consult about it but mr mishani advised that you go for a second hand car that can even stall on the road on the very first day so that you can begin to understand about parts and operations of a vehicle consult enough when that time comes in conclusion for those individuals who made some very very big mistakes and ended up losing a lot of money especially in the areas of businesses they considered it as a lesson or a school where they had enrolled and the money they lost as the school fees mr siso for instance after buying a matatu against all the good advice that he had been given instead of constructing a house was very positive on the issues that he had learned along the way he now knows the different parts of a vehicle like the back of his hand where to find the genuine parts which type of tires are the best the brokers that are in the industry that can connect you with instant buyers among others he considers himself to have enrolled in a street school but most importantly he okitu ilimtoka kwa roho if he had not invested in that area he would still be having regrets and the what if questions which believe it or not are more traumatizing than the loss of money you can imagine you're about to retire and you are asking yourself what if i invested in that area additionally it is good that he including myself among others who have committed such big mistakes in our 20s and early 30s because we still have some time to recover instead of buying a matatu with retirement money for instance so if you really feel that you can venture into a particular area against the advice of your parents your friends your colleagues and this video please 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 go for it just do it believe it or not the regrets of what if are worse and more frustrating than the failures encountered in a particular area so my advice would be in conclusion just go for it just do it you never know what's going to come out of it thank you so much amar